Well, all right, everybody, this is Ross. Today we are making a lot of changes to my orchard. And so we have a number of plans that over really the next week or so, I'm gonna be making uh, to this backyard orchard. And so a lot of it though is, a, is about my preferences, my taste preferences. A lot of it is I have extra plants kind of lying around uh, that I've sort of accumulated and another part of it is just about light and so we don't really get a ton of light here on the property and a lot of that has to do with these big shade trees they're everywhere and so this is south that is uh where the sun rises and so basically for most of the day a lot of the area here that would be usable is unusable and so the areas that do actually get light at a certain point of the day uh, i've overcrowded them by simply just planting too many too many plants and so i think we get carried away i'm gonna very well illustrate this for you guys because we get carried away with growing a lot of fruit trees when we first start out we want to get as much fruit as possible and the waiting period to get fruit on some of these things can be quite a, a long time and so when it takes a long time like that I think we just get carried away and decide to plant all kinds of stuff. So here's a good example in that I actually very recently found an American persimmon tree on the side of the road, harvested roughly 700 persimmons. Uh, there's a lot actually in the dehydrator that is uh, finished. And so now I have more persimmons that I know what to do with. And I'm also realizing by the way, that with the 10 persimmon trees that I have, and I just planted two very recently, um, I just have way too many persimmons. <laughs> and it's kind of not a, it's not a bad thing. Um, but soon a lot of these persimmon trees, especially the one in the front, my Rosianca, is probably gonna put out roughly 200 persimmons by itself. Uh, or at least it seems like quite a bit of fruit. And so in total, I'm probably going to get somewhere in the 250 range of persimmons this year. Um, but also between the, the Fuyu types, uh, the, the Asian persimmons I have over here, it's, it's just getting a little crazy. So the same thing happens over here with my, my peach trees, right? I have a lot of peach trees and I didn't really intend, I think, to have this many peach trees and I didn't really know what was going to happen but i planted these two and they're standards and they've been here for seven or eight years and over this time uh, each one of them produces at least 300 fruits every year and so what are you going to do with 300 peaches and especially when they come in relatively around the same time um what's nice is at least with the two peaches i have they come in one comes in a lot earlier and the other one comes in as a fall peach and so they kind of provide me a longer season of peaches. Uh, so I get to eat peaches over a longer period of time, but it's still like, how many peaches can a human being eat? You know? Um, and so if I had not just those two trees over there that we looked at, but I had an additional six more peach trees on top of that, what am I gonna do with all that fruit? Here's another example. Um, I have had the most amazing success this year with my jujubes, um, particularly the ones in the containers. I find that I don't really enjoy them uh, all that much, but I have two in-ground jujube trees here that are massive. And so I realize I don't like the fruit enough. Um, the container trees do fantastic. Um, I thought by planting them in the ground, I may gain some sort of benefit. I may have uh, probably a, a tree that you know, gets to a larger size, is more reliable in terms of fruiting, and also produces a lot of fruit. And just, that just hasn't been the case uh, with the in-ground trees just yet. But the potted trees have done phenomenal. In fact, there's probably still some fruits on these. Between uh, Honey Jar and Zhuzhou, it's unbelievable actually how much fruit that they put out. And a lot of it has to, I, I'm learning, has to do with just the soil moisture. By giving these trees a lot of soil moisture, they have really started to uh, put out huge crops of fruit. And so I have a lot of jujubes and I don't eat 
jujubes that often. I don't like them that much. Um, I find that eating them fresh is inferior to an apple. Uh, pretty much 10 times out of 10. Uh, I do f think it's interesting to have them because they're a different species of fruit that you don't really have access to. Um, but the only real way to, I think, enjoy them is to eat them dry. And so the only real the only real jujube I think that's worth keeping for that purpose is is Lee. Lee is the largest and really does get a better flavor. Uh, it's quite terrible actually fresh. Uh, it's one of the I think worst ones I have fresh. It's not I wouldn't say it's terrible, but it certainly you know gets way better when it's dry. And so that's the purpose of it. It's meant for that. And so we're gonna cut out one of the trees over there because, well, why have it? If it's just gonna be there and I don't really need all those fruits, what's the point? In fact, it's in a way hurting. So I could be, instead of having that tree in this limited space that I have, in this limited light that I have, cut it out and put something else there or let something else grow in its place. And so, believe it or not, actually I have a couple trees that are coming in in its place already. And if I don't remove this, I'm not sure how much success I'm really going to have. Here's a um, really small persimmon that I planted, which, by the way, don't really even need. Here's a new mulberry that my friend Chris gave me. It's an ever-wearing mulberry of some kind. And then we also have a, another young persimmon in there in between all this mess. And so it's just the reality of it, I think. Um, I'm not really going to be able to have so many of these fruit trees there's even a, a citrus tree in here a hardy citrus tree and then you got to think about all these figs and behind it is even a grapevine and so there's just so many things i like this style in a way of planting i like a higher dense density planting it's just difficult to manage um and a lot of the things if you're not careful you don't kind of can't see the picture the future of what everything's gonna look like accurately, you're gonna run out of light. And so certain things aren't gonna get that light and you're not gonna have good success. So I actually, with this plot over here, just removed actually a plum. Uh, so we removed the plum on the end. This is a, it was an Italian prune plum. I basically cut them off uh, at the base with a saw and then chopped them up here. And so the Italian prune plum, I've gotten prune plums from farmer's markets now, dried them into prunes, and I'm just not really that impressed. I think what you need is probably a really dry climate to sun dry them, and that's probably where it's, it's worth it. Otherwise, I don't think in this limited space I have, it's worth it. So what I'm gonna do instead is uh, a neighbor of mine, a friend of mine, Anthony, shout out to Anthony in Philadelphia, he gave me these, um, triple crown blackberries and so triple crown was a variety that i used to have for actually a number of years we had a raised bed over here before we put the fig trees in and we had a raised bed of uh not only blackberries but of raspberries and i had struggled so much one year when i had mountains of these triple crown blackberries i struggled so much with uh spotted wing drosophilia swd that i ripped them out and i didn't know how to deal with them and now I've learned, obviously, how to deal with them. And I know, uh, you know, picking up falling fruit, if it's going to start to ferment, it's going to only attract those fruit flies. So you got to be really careful when you plant things as well. I mean, if the more you plant, not only the less light that you have and the more fruit you get, but also you got to pick up the fallen fruit. You're going to have to worry about more about pests and more about diseases. And so we're just being a bit realistic. We're coming back now to blackberries. I really do miss having blackberries. I know that I love the Marionberry. I've struggled a little bit with this Marionberry plant over here. And so it just seems like a very brittle and fragile plant that doesn't even survive the winter here very well. Whereas these will. We also have a new blackberry right here that's thorned from a uh, rain tree. And so this one, hopefully I'll get to taste more of it next year. Uh, it was pretty good this year, but very young, still not established. And then we have a, another Marion Berry, but it's it's actually a it's some kind of child of the Marion Berry 
I forget what it's called. Columbia Star, Columbia Giant. No, not Columbia Giant. Maybe it's Star. And so that one's supposed to be an improvement on the Marion Berry. And um, so we're going to find out. But regardless, I know this is a very tried and true. This variety, Triple Crown, is going to do well here. Uh, the only thing I need to do is make sure it gets enough light and heat. The more heat I can give it, the better off it's going to be. But with the blackberries specifically, they only really need that first crop. Or at least I don't have enough length of my season to ripen a primacane crop. So the floricanes are where triple crown shines, and that's really what it only produces. So by having a, a larger floricane crop over here, that's enough for me. And so I don't really need a ton of plants. These are... Um, really nicely established at this point and so all i'm going to do is just take these out of the pots and plop them right in the ground so right here where this prune plum is i'm going to move that raised bed back there put it here the raspberries the black raspberries are my favorite of the colored raspberries so i kept the reds caroline is a is definitely a winner but i ripped out all the all the other raspberries and so i have some here that i'll probably ship to people I'm not sure what I'm going to do with them, but I cut the tops off. Maybe I'll give them away to friends. I haven't decided, but there's purple raspberries here and yellow raspberries. And so I just don't like them nearly as much and they don't perform nearly as well as Caroline. And so I'd rather have Caroline for the Primacane crop exclusively, have the black raspberry here um, for the Floricane crop, and then... Um, you know, essentially just uh, enjoy my raspberries to a better degree. So again, a lot of this is about light and space and about what I prefer to eat, right? Not that big of a fan of the jujubes, so we're going to get rid of them. I know that the container figs or the container jujubes do well, but I'm going to get rid of both of those and keep only really the Lee and hope that my Lee performs well. We remove the Italian prune plum because the Italian prune plum not really a fan of when I dry them. In fact, I think you really have to slowly dry them rather than putting them in a dehydrator. And so I'll buy them again probably next year at the farmer's market. We'll see. Maybe I can change a little bit. Um, but I also removed a Japanese plum back there to give more light to these other plums. Um, you know, what I really want is really high quality plums. So I have myself a gauge plum. I got the apricot here, which is one of my favorite fruits. We even have the early blush apricot, which is phenomenal. And so I'm gonna try to train this thing more outwards this way to get more of that light. It's supposed to be on a standard rootstock, so it should get bigger than the rest of these trees. Uh, we'll have to see about that. But um, yeah, it's just about kind of giving this area a bit more light and thinning this out. There's a tree in here I grafted. It was a, I think it's a Santa Rosa. I decided to chop out my Santa Rosa. And so I grafted onto the Santa Rosa a different variety of plum that's going to be much tastier. And so there's the graft union there. Doesn't look, uh, it's not really in the best spot, but I think what I'll do is probably after pollination or after these trees flower and bloom, uh, I will cut out most of that tree to let the graft union grow. And so that's further thinning out this area. Uh, the more light we get, the better disease uh, we, better we handle disease um, and also the more light we get the easier it is for me to spray the plums with with surrounds and that's the first year really I'm going to be doing that at all but the plum cacurlio is getting really out of control and so that's what we're doing mostly today um, in this area now I also have we're going to remove the jujube we mentioned on that side of the, the west side of the property that covers mostly this side of the property. But over here, I actually am gonna plant a couple Girardi mulberries. So probably put one right here and then space the other one maybe four feet apart. Um, put them rather close together. I have two grafted trees or trees that I grafted. There's one right there. These are just random seedlings that popped up. And so over the years, I've just been, every seedling I see, I graft onto it. And so another seedling back here, I'm going to dig these up, transplant them over here, and uh, we'll have mulberries 
in a, just a better location because if I keep the mulberry over here, it's shading out this new grapevine that I planted in. And I'm trying to train that grapevine uh, along this fence. And so even just this area here, this fence area doesn't get a lot of light. And I really like my grapes, but my grapes, even my Mars hasn't performed well this year. And it's really just due to a lack of light, which is kind of coming in here from all these apple trees. And so I've got about 20 or so apple trees here and these don't really do well i'm not gonna lie to you um i'm not a huge fan of the dwarf size i may keep a couple of these but most of these are coming out i'm getting rid of most of these apples i'd rather have an apple tree of a, a standard size rootstock in an area with much more light this is a very shady spot in my yard the apple trees don't perform well uh, the squirrels get a lot of them. I've solved the squirrel problem. So I have to focus on disease now at this point and pests. Uh, but, you know, things can be improved for sure. But in general, you know, these apple trees don't, they don't do well in this spot. And so what I'd rather do is plant, like I said, a, a standard somewhere else. And apples are not really my main concern either. I don't really get it. I don't really get the apple craze, sorry. I know there's a lot of apple fans out there, but they're better fruits, easier fruits to grow. Uh, and you could buy really, really good apples at the store. There's no real reason to, I think, buy apples or grow apples, unless it's of a variety that's really spectacular, like something like Gravenstein or something that's really, really good. Um, and so that'll be a day in the future where I come back to these apples. But for now, I'm getting rid of them. And uh, that will just simply bring a lot more light to this whole area back here. And I can very easily have more light to the muscadine grapes back there. The uh, Labrusca grapes I have here against the fence. All of which I'd rather have more, have more quantity and higher quality than these apples. With all the struggles now I've, I've suffered with these apples. And believe it or not, they're actually kind of coming in on their own. And I hope that this isn't really a a mistake i may keep maybe one or two of these trees uh but for the most part i think the majority of them are coming out it's it's clear to me that there's it this just isn't the spot for them this isn't the um this isn't the world <laughs> that they should be grown in um and so that's going to bring a lot of more space over here for me to plant different things we're we're also wanting to try other fruits and so one of the fruits i want to try is the aronia berry we just tried the uh, elderberry this year. And so I'm gonna plant probably another elderberry, but also an aronia berry over here. And so I know the aronia berry doesn't need a ton of light. Maybe I'll stick, maybe I'll stick it over there where the apples are. But I'm also getting myself a Cornelian cherry. Somebody reached out to me on Instagram a while ago and re highly recommended the Cornelian cherry, especially a variety called Elegant. So we're gonna plant Elegant right here in this spot it's a shade tolerant tree that doesn't get too big and so that'll keep the grapevines happy that'll keep uh keep me interested in growing some other fruit that ripens actually at a time of the year in the fall where there isn't really a ton of fruit um and so those are two new additions the aronia berry the cornelian cherry that i'm really excited to try and want to grow um the aronia berry, by the way, is very astringent, but I have heard on good authority that a lot of that astringency, if not all of it, eventually does go away. And there are methods of getting rid of it. And so I've tasted them before when they are very astringent, and I wouldn't recommend growing them or eating them when they are that astringent, but it is a tasty fruit. And so if you can get rid of that astringency, I don't see why it wouldn't be a really phenomenal thing to uh, have in your yard. This other plant here, it's called the Yosta berry. I have two of these. They're two different varieties. I think there's a black and a red. Whatever this one is, I don't like this one nearly as much as the other. And uh, so we're gonna remove this one. This is again, gonna get more light in here. We also are gonna remove these Espaillade plums. I have decided this just isn't a great place for Espaillade plums. What I may do is, um, dig one of these up and plant it over by where the other plums are um, because there are two varieties in there that i've grafted um, 
onto those. And instead, by the way, I'm gonna come back to this. Instead, I'm going to actually plant an acai kiwi berry here. And so acai, I've tried in the past, actually one of my first years growing fruit. And it really struggled with root rot. And uh, it's just the calling card of that, that variety. Um, but to be honest with you, my soil has improved greatly and I've learned a lot about growing plants. And so I don't imagine, if I give it a lot of mulch and I give it better soil, I don't imagine it really struggling with root rot in the future. Um, and so we'll plant it right here in the center and trade it against, trend it against these wires and things and have ourselves a, a bush, uh, grape like kiwi berry um, that doesn't get too big. We'll probably spur prune it. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know if spur pruning is the right way, but we'll prune it back a lot in the summertime to keep it in control. And then uh, these plums are getting out of here. So, a lot of changes, a lot of different things coming in here in the yard. Um, and so I'm excited to do all these changes because to me, some of you guys may think this is rather drastic. Removing, I'm removing a lot of trees. There's a lot of years that were put into some of these trees, but in the end, I know it's gonna be worth it. Um, maybe next year I'll sacrifice some fruits, but in other things, we'll do a lot better and have more fruits on them. And so there's plenty of fruit back here. There's plenty of um, trees that I can harvest from that will give me the food that I desire. Um, so anyway, guys, this is Ross. I wanted to update you guys on the plans, my thought process. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. See you guys for the next one. Take care.